Questions for coach, starting with Jamison, left side. Uh, morning, Paul. Uh, two for you. First, on the bench, your view, Nico Mikola's goal, obviously, uh, kind of a roller coaster there. First, the puck going to, to Bob, and then he scores the 10 seconds later in the, the arena, of course, the, and then the cheer. Just what was it like from your perspective, kind of watching that unfold? And did you kind of have fun, well, some fun with that in the film room today? So you have to understand from the bench, there's two corners, two sides of the ice. You don't, really don't see much. You got to look at the Jumbotron. So I see him spin, and then my eyes kind of get away from him. I'm, I'm, just looking where everybody else is on the ice because I think this puck's coming north and almost went five holes. So, uh, yeah, you don't see that very often. And then he gets up the ice and good on him and nice little drop pass puck to the net, but he's been, I don't think either team, no, that's not true. I don't think RD have been up the ice quite as much as they were in the last series. Um, and that is probably a function of respect of their transition game on something that gets knocked down like not even a turnover just a broken play and you're up the middle of the ice so you got a problem so but he picked the right time to get up we had good control real nice inside pass to Lundell and then uh, he picked the right hole to get into and then on Evan Rodriguez we talked all year about how you have you know the pairs of forwards that keep together and you yeah. always that third guy Roddy's kind of been that third guy on every line at some point how do you know when a player can play that role and kind of be that Swiss Army knife Oh, you're looking for blocks of time of, of success. It doesn't have to dominate. It's certainly not going to last. No line does. Blocks of time, and then you probably have probably three or four things that we can do up front with our lines. Vladimir played with Barky. You know, we have three guys that have played that left side. Reinhardt is the consistent Pete. And because of injuries, then, you're almost forced to look at everything, which is really, really good for you. You don't like it at the time. But when you get into a game, even last night when Barkov leaves the game, we get fairly close to lines that we've understood or that we've had to run for five or six games. So it's not, hey, I'm playing with somebody new. So hey, I'm back playing with you again. So it, the adversity helps. Front row. Uh, Coach John Barkov, any update? Have you been able to talk with him since last night? He came in today. He wasn't worse. So that's a really good thing. And the real assessment will be tomorrow. But if he continues to progress, we should be in good shape. And then just secondly, real quick, if he wasn't able to go, you've used Anton to be able to fill spots whenever you have top six. Guys. Yeah. Just knowing that, obviously, if it gets that scenario, just knowing that you've used him before and with how well we've been playing in the playoffs, just having the luxury of a guy like Lundell to be able to fill roles that need to be filled. Yeah, so we have experience with, with Barkov out. And when you, even in this run, while he didn't miss a game, we played five games with Sam Bennett. So we... We've done it enough that everybody, if you, if you walked in there and say, if Barky doesn't play, what are the lines? The guys would all know probably what the lines are. Right side, George. Yeah. Uh, going back to Barkov, um, is there a possibility that he's, I mean, do you expect him to travel with you first? And could no, he you know what, George, I, I don't know that I'm, I can do all the hypotheticals for you. He left. We had uh, some things that needed to get looked at today. They got looked at, so there's nothing sinister there. So we kind of passed that. He felt better today. F feels good. Um, but you got to give it then another 24 hours to make sure that, that he's still feeling strong. And if, that, if he continues to progress, then we think he'll be a player for us. And to, to follow up on Nico Mikula, uh, the sense of humor with him. Like maybe a lot of people don't talk. Like last night, it was like, you know, he woke Bobby up or whatever. He was like, good thing Bob was awake. He's um, a great personality and i've said this kind of during the year and we 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 you know i mean we're always i was gonna say it'd be great if you guys could spend a lot of time with him but then we spend a lot of time trying to make sure you guys don't spend too much time with our guy so they're gonna forget that but he is an incredibly interesting guy what's great is when he's coming to the bench if there's something that's broken down and i'm not sure if he's screaming and finish or it's in english but it is funny as hell um, and it's consistent. So he plays at a really high energy level. So a lot of times these kind of big lanky guys are, you, you don't really think they're moving that fast, but they are. He, he looks like he's, he's getting across the ice and, you know, he competes hard. That's what, what, what we like the most of him. But he, he talks at a high energy level too on the bench and that's great, right? We, we have some quiet players on our bench and that's fine. That's who they are. But those guys like Mikola, who's, who's got, Nobody knows. Well, there's four other Finnish guys know what he's saying, but nobody else knows what he's saying. Right side. Paul, you, you wake up this morning. I presume you've probably watched the game again. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on the hit on Barkov day after? Do you, is your view different than maybe what it was at the time? 
Well, I would, I would view it without as much emotion. And, um, and then I, I, I don't, uh, uh, it's done. The refs call the penalty on the ice. The league looks at every, just about every single hit. They'll make their decision. And then we, we aren't dealing with that anymore today. For, and then part of that is just the discipline, mental discipline to, to leave the game where it is regardless of the result. And I, I don't need, I understand why you guys want to talk about it. It's a story. Shit, you guys, seven weeks of this stuff. So you guys, you got to grind too. But I, I'd stay out of it. It's done for me. It's all done. Left side, second row. Going to Edmonton now, you know they're going to come out desperate for game three. What do you guys have to do to make sure you stay within your game and, and are prepared to handle their push? Well, well, first you kind of reach back and take a look at what you've learned. Right? We've, we've been in situations where there would be a heavy push by what would then be the home team. Um, there is a, an advantage in, in, you know, they've got two basic advantages going back to Edmonton, and one is that adrenaline push that they get. There, there's a certain freedom that comes as you get, you know, we get move further into a series for both teams. There's not 10 games left. We know that. And also, the last match uh, at home, right? That's the other thing they get to do. So, I, I, I don't knock, I'm going to make very sure I don't walk into the room any differently than I have at any other point in time for a road game. We're a pretty good road team. They're an excellent, excellent home team, as you would understand. Not particularly about Barkov, but uh, how do you think that, do you think that the star players in the NHL are protected, protected uh, yeah, I do. well enough? I, yes, I do. I think overall, in that area, the game has never been as in good a shape as it is now. There just aren't players on the ice. First of all, just, there's just, I don't even know if there's any players on the ice who are consistently being suspended because they they take shots at star players. You just don't see it. And and there's, I, I think the players respect each other on the ice. It's the, it's the final. The stakes are high. The hits are finished. I have no problem with that. We'd like both teams to stay 100% healthy straight through it. That would be fair for two, it's not just players, it's the organizations work so hard to get there. That would be the perfect world. But I think, the, I think the league and the player, more importantly, the players themselves do take care of each other on the ice. Front row left. Uh, Paul, last night as you came to talk to the media after the game, you didn't necessarily look like the coach who was up 2 nothing in the Stanley Cup final series. Oh, he's grumpy. <laughs> I'm allowed. You seem to be in a lot better mood today. Would you please talk us through that emotional roller coaster that you go through post-game to the morning after? Yeah, I I, I am. I try to present myself honestly. Uh, I, I would have measured my words. I know going into that press conference that shut up. Like I'm, I'm telling myself, just shut up. Because it's emotional, right? You're wired. So I tried to keep it short. I know I'm being a bit of a jerk to you, and you guys don't deserve it. You didn't do anything wrong. But that's who I. That's how I felt. I, that's exactly what I was feeling. But I was. I don't think that's true, what I just said to you. You didn't get to see what I was feeling, so the manifestation of it was just grumpy grinding his teeth. But I didn't swear, I don't think. So the jar is empty, and I, I, I want our team to have the mental discipline to leave the game at the night. So you, you got my emotion from the game last night, and that one's gone. So today is my off day. It's pouring rain in Florida today. I'm okay. Left side, front row. Are you a big Oprah fan? I'm sorry? Are you a big Oprah fan? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, how I'm feeling. I like that. Um, uh, they came back and played, but it looked a little scary. It was Dorian and, and Ekblad. How, did they come yeah. through that okay? Yeah, we, we, we're good. You're, and just because you guys were so banged up last year, you are healthy sort of now. Is that kind of a blessing? I mean, with the depth you have? And like, yeah, it's a complete blessing. I mean, we were beat to death. So Ekblad had a broken foot. It popped his shoulder out twice and it strained or torn an oblique. And I think he did three of those in the Boston series. How much fun was that? Six weeks for him. Bennett broke his foot and didn't tell anybody. He just, if you don't tell a trainer, he doesn't know that that shot block hurt. And at the end of the season, he said, yeah, you probably should x-ray my foot. And he broke. We had a whole bunch of those, right? That's, so we're lucky. And, that, as, and that's the fear of all of this for the Oilers and for us. 
it changes on a hit. You go from your team looks a certain way to loose to run and blocks a shot and it's over and now your team looks different. That's what, that is the, uh, the, the risk, I guess we've been, I don't take it, the risk the players take you know, um, in a full contact sport. Some of it is, yeah, you know, like that puck gets loose to two inches lower. You know, it's a great shot block and we're high five and everybody and we look a little bit different. So there is that element. I'll take two more questions. So part, the practices like the day before a series starts, they're almost fun to watch, right? If you do any kind of competition drills, they're all about five feet off each other. <laughs> they just, nobody wants anything bad to happen. Uh, two more for coach, right side, second row. Paul, you guys, uh, I think, only allowed seven shots on goal over the first two periods. Uh, I can't imagine that's something that happens to Edmonton often. Um, so just what did you like when you went back and, and rewatched, like, you know, the defense performance? I thought it was, it was an extension of our third period. We play a fairly hard gap game defensively. If you are off, the, the Edmonton Oilers more than any other team in the league. If you're off that gap by a few feet, you're not even wrong. Right. The, on the video, I can't say, why are you 50 feet off this guy? You're only three feet off the guy. And I, I understand why you human nature says you have to give ice to some of these players. They're so fast, but it's a it's a you can't get caught in the gray mat gray area playing this game that we play. And I thought we were pretty courageous with our gap. Last question back left. Just please wait for the microphone. Hi, Paul. Uh, you talked about some of the funny stuff uh, that happened last night. That it was a, even a sleeper hold there at the end of the game. Um, how are? How, is I, it more I, I've got about five minutes left to go in the game. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not joking. I haven't got to that sleeper yeah. hold part. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, is it more difficult for players to adapt? I guess the rule book is not the same now as it is maybe in October. I don't. I don't know. Like, like three or four of those calls. I would consider light. It's not a complaint, but um, you want the hitting in the game, right? I, I don't feel feel that the rule book. I don't feel like we played four games, regular season games against Boston, that were every bit as heavy as every playoff game we've played, possibly with the exception of the six games we played against Boston, which were brutal. Right, as, as heavy and as mean as I've ever seen it. So I don't, I don't feel this is an overly physical series. This is a fast series from bench level. That's I walk away going, oh my God, these guys can get up and down the ice. Both teams. The transition speed is awesome. So that, that's the way I view the series. I don't find it that there's a you know, little blow up and, and that's going to happen with the intensity, but there's not continuous scrums kind of like our entire Boston series from last year. And I, they dropped the puck just to end the scrums.